Welcome back to The Observation, the number one show in crypto and culture, sponsored by Cash App. Cash App, when personal finance meets your funds and the stuff that matters, that's money, that's Cash App. And if you use my code Aubrey, you'll get $15 in free money when you sign up. So use my code. Today we have on the co-founder of After Party, Robert Graham, who is also from my home state. This is very rare to meet somebody from Arizona. Yeah, I know. I saw your area code come up when uh, when we first started texting and I was like, oh, yes. Arizona person. Yes, 480 recognized 480 numbers. Yeah. And it's very rare that you see that kind of in this space. So where did you grow up? I grew up in Glendale. Oh, really? Yeah, over on the west side. And then honestly, kind of the middle of nowhere <laughs> when I really? first, yeah. Are you right where the stadium is? No, I'm north. So I'm up on, you know, like Happy Valley and 59th Avenue. Oh, damn. So like way up there, yeah. We basically didn't grow up in the same state because no. I grew up in Mesa on the east side. Yeah, opposite sides. Totally. I remember this is kind of <laughs> not that interesting to anybody else, but it was interesting <laughs> to me. I was uh, On my block, there was like three houses and we would see a car go by every 15 minutes when I first moved there. It was damn. like the middle of the desert. Why were you living there? You grew up just your... <sighs> My dad, uh, my dad's a chiropractor and had his clinic over there. It was actually kind of fun. I got to ride dirt bikes and do stuff in the desert as a kid. Just you just don't give me you don't give me Arizona energy. Really, I don't know why. Yeah, well, I didn't really like living there, so yeah. <laughs> well, all right. moved, that's why I moved. That's I also don't live there anymore. Yeah. So <laughs> anyway, um, you're in LA now. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. and you're building after party. Yes, building after party. So if you're if you're new to this space. Crypto Web3. After Party is maybe one of the biggest Web3 companies that I honestly heard in LA pop up during the last cycle. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, we've we've done a really good job and and you know been very focused on building community and, and really bringing a lot of great people into the space. Um, our whole thought process, you know, and still to this day, it, you know, is and was. This is really difficult for most people to understand. <laughs> uh, so we wanted to build a community and build a lot of trust with the individuals that we've been working with and have known for a while um, and, and have been able to do that pretty effectively with After Party across socials and brought a lot of people in and kind of explained, you know, what the blockchain is and what we're building. And they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Whereas I think most are very technical and people have no idea what they're yeah. trying to build or do. Literally no one has any clue. I feel like that's the hardest thing in this space is trying to make it feel not foreign or feel like approachable for people. Yeah. And I feel like you in New York, people kind of are open to tech they're like expecting it mm -hmm. i'm not judging la we're not <laughs> <laughs> but i'm not saying that la to me feels like the biggest tech city and you were throwing a lot of events to try to get people in the doors Do you want to just kind of like talk about I, I, first of all all I, all I heard all summer was like are you going to after after parties throwing after Love party it. this after party that Love like I, I was like fomoing into yeah. what you guys were were up to and what you were doing and then also Literally every influencer was at your events, and yeah, that's yeah. unheard of in this space to get like influencers to hang out with with people who are kind of nerdy. Yeah, in it was, some ways, it was uh, yeah, it, it was an interesting time. I think um, I think yeah, we we were able to really kind of push it with the influencer community and and get a lot of people over. I've been in the space for a long time. I've been you know working with you know creatives and influencers and managing talent for a long time. So. I've also been in the crypto space for a long time. So it was this kind of perfect storm where I could bring them in and they trusted me and yeah. I could explain what we were doing. But yeah, our events are really great. They're exciting. We've had some of the biggest artists in the world uh, perform and attend our events on a, on a very consistent basis. Um, you know, we had Jaden Hostler and Paul Klein and Sia and all these people, David Dobrik in the door, you know, from day one and have been big supporters of, of us. Uh, from the beginning, but um, really what the events are, we have kind of two lanes in, in, in After Party. We have a membership community where we bring in creators, we bring in builders in Web3, uh, we bring in, you know, musicians and artists, and uh, they're a part of kind of our community and they get access to all things that we do. Um, we threw a 6,500 person token gated music festival in Vegas, 30 plus events this year, and our next 12 months are going to be pretty crazy too. We just announced a partnership with The Win and Art of the Wild. Um, we're going to be doing that in November. Uh, but really what that is, is we, we really like to focus on the members and, and our whole thing is digital assets or NFTs for access. Yeah. Um, so we, you know, fundamentally believe that if you're going to own one of these things, if you're going to have digital ownership of, of a token or an NFT, you should get access to something or immediate value from that. And, uh, that's, that's what we've been trying to build on the, on the membership side of after party is really giving back these incredible experiences and, and allowing people to understand what. Uh, digital ownership of something can can grant you. Um, so we're focused on 
on building that side of the business and, and, and really showing what, you know, the blockchain technology allows in terms of like membership and opportunity and community. So when you're pitching these um, musicians, celebrities, influencers, and you're telling them, hey, I want you to be a part of this, mm -hmm. what is your pitch? The pitch is, hey, come in, uh, let us tell you about kind of what we're building. You're going to get access to all things that we're doing, and we feel like we do some pretty cool stuff. So a lot of the individuals in LA are like, wow, this sounds cool and great. I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of the things that you're doing. I mean, like I said, we have great artists performing. We have this really incredible community that comes together. And and it's not just a, a you know a, a community that comes together to kind of get a couple of drinks and leave. Like, there's so many instances where artists have met each other at one of our events and have either collaborated on a song or started building a company together or you know have met each other for the first time. Dobrik and Sia were at my at my place and they were big fans of each other and I had no idea. And they ended up going in one of our rooms and having like an hour and a half long conversation. And now they're great friends. Like they hang out all the time. Wow. So we built this really, you know, kind of interesting community of, of, of influencers, creatives, and then artists and a lot of builders in, in the space that are building cool companies and technology. And, and to be fair, a lot of these creators are interested in what's next. So they like attending our, our events and, and meeting and kind of understanding what's coming. They're smart, right? Like they, they were early on these social platforms on TikTok, on Instagram and YouTube. And, and I think a lot of them think that, uh, you know, there's going to be some pretty important companies built on the blockchain and they want to kind of understand that a little bit more. That's amazing. That's such a sick story. Also, how do you, I guess if I was watching the show, I'd be like, who, who is Robert? Like, how mm. does he know all these people? <laughs> How do you know David Dobrik and Sia? And how do you have all these connections to even reach out to begin with? Because I think that's, we talk about creators, and I think that creators was a very interesting um, sort of, a, not not just even a narrative, but a proponent of the, of the last bull market and talking about how do we kind of unleash people to, to make their own money and kind of get off of mm -hmm. Web 2 yeah. into Web 3. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it's talking to those people who were early on Vine, who saw technology moving and saw trends and, and came to it, but maybe Web3 is not as intuitive as a social platform. Sure. So, so number one, how do you, how do you know everyone? And then, how, and then like that, that leap for them. Yeah, I think, uh, well, how I know everybody is, is I've been in the space for a long time. I started working off at, or working at Paradigm Talent Agency. Uh, I was working with uh, traditional like TV and film talent. Mm -hmm. um, I did that for a couple of years and that a lot of people and when you work at a big agency you meet a lot of people pretty quickly mm -hmm. and they don't really stick around for the most part of the big agency but they go off and do cool things you yeah. know like they start a production company or they're a partner somewhere or they're a manager of some talent you know post Milan or whatever whoever it is and uh, so i met a lot of people there and then i i saw kind of the emergence of, of social really i i saw these social platforms start to take shape and um, I left Paradigm and started my own agency very, very, very early on. I was just how kinda, old were you at the time? Uh, when I started my own agency, I think it was like 28. Okay. Um, on the, on the social side. And, uh, yeah, I was just, I was just telling the story, but I, I, I started representing some of the very early Vine people, you know, the, so cool. the, the people that had a huge following yeah. at the time on Vine, which was like a couple hundred thousand. And, uh, and I was approaching every brand under the sun and I'm like, Hey, you should work with this person. Let us do a, let us do a deal on their social media platforms and promote your product or your app or whatever it was. And, uh, and they all looked at me like I was insane. I was going <laughs> from door to door trying to get money. And, and finally this one application that was like a, it was like a, uh, an app for kind of children's content, I guess, like younger people content. And I had one of the, one of the guys that we were working with do a promotion on his, on his Vine channel. And they got like, I don't know. 10,000 downloads overnight. And they're like, whoa, we should do this over and over and over <laughs> again. And then I had a case study and then I started going out and, and that developed over time. Uh, so I, I was in, I ended up managing, I think like 50 plus people and, and had, uh, you know, had a lot of great relationships with a lot of the bigger brands that emerged through social. Um, so yeah, I did that for a while. And that's, that's really how I met everybody because I was working with them or I was working with them through their current manager or whatever. But I would, I would meet a lot of individuals and I built trust over time. So, um, it's a small, small town once yeah. you're kind of in that world, the yeah. entertainment world. And, you know, there's very few people that manage these talent and there's very few people that work with them on a consistent basis. And I was one of those people early on. Wow. Okay. 
Um, and then so for them, you know, you're early, you see Vine. I remember Vine, for me, I was addicted. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen trends too, especially in social, and, I, and I'm like, I, I have a problem with TikTok right now. Like, I can't yeah, get off of does. it. It's like the algorithm's too good. Mm -hmm. Vine was great. It's crazy to me that they shut down. I mean. Crazy. Why, like, crazy, why crazy. not just. <laughs> I have no idea. It was so weird. That was bizarre. Um, because I loved it. I love like the brevity of it. I thought that people had to be great. smarter. That's why kind of I like Twitter so mm -hmm. much. And I grew my following on Twitter is because you only have a certain amount of someone's attention that you can get in mm -hmm. that time. And then what you do with that is kind of the genius behind what you can do. Right. Um, and so it, it's just wild to me because so many people that came out of there, I remember even like, what was that tour of, uh, guys like those mad con kids that mm -hmm. were, basically becoming the first sort of like almost a boy band of uh social which yeah. never happened going on before tour, going on tour out, huge um, venues almost like earlier than mm -hmm. tiktok now like they were like the precursor to what like a charlie d'amelio or an addison ray kind of ended up being in some ways yeah and i mean you see this with every platform like you saw with vine their early adopters are able to yeah. kind of land grab the attention and they grow really really quickly and then one platform starts to die and the other one emerges, right? Like yeah. YouTube emerged and, and, and Instagram. Um, and you have these early adopters to these platforms who are smart, they get yeah. on early and they're able to figure out a way to draw a ton of attention themselves. And that attention moves, right? Like when the other platform or one, when one platform starts to die and another one picks up, they just kind of move the attention over to the, to the new, the new platform. And we see it over and over and over and over again. I mean, the most recent example was TikTok, yeah. uh, which you're mentioning now, but we will see a plateau there in terms of engagement and views. And what's really interesting about TikTok is they've done something completely different where I think they've proven that the algorithm is more powerful than the actual creator. Mm. When you get on TikTok, you default to random videos, not yeah. people that you're necessarily following. And it's given these, these creators that don't have huge audiences, the ability to get their content seen by totally. potentially millions of people, which is interesting. And I think a lot of these social platforms will follow suit. I think that you'll see, you know, Instagram and, and others start to default to what content people actually are interested in and want to see rather than just seeing the creator's content, which I yeah. think will be, I think will be interesting just in terms of like brand dollars and where, where money's actually going. It'll be an interesting shift. Yeah, I, I, I actually like watching my For You page yeah. on TikTok mm -hmm. more than I like watching the people that I follow, yeah. which is kind of weird to me. Yeah. Um, and so I, what are your thoughts on like, is Instagram dying? Like all these people who have grown massive followings by, yeah. you know, people who have helped them grow via talent agencies or whatever. Mm -hmm. And what are you hearing from these creators? Do they want to move off of like are they what is, what is the thought for them because there's the, the people they're just trying to get off zero and like mm -hmm. grow a following and there's people who've already crushed it yeah and they want to make it to that next level of stuff a lot of them i feel like try to be like now i'm a, an angel investor and i invest right. in companies and i'm doing yeah, my yeah. own fund mm -hmm. you know you see kim kardashian getting making her own private equity or like joining a private equity yeah. company um so what, do you, what are your thoughts there? I think Instagram is dying. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a slow decline, but I do think it's dying. I think they're, they're, trying to, they're trying to do some interesting things around like Web3 and digital assets and collectibles, which we'll see if that pans out or not. Um, but uh, to your point, you do see like the, the Kim Kardashians, the Haley Biebers, Jennifer Lopez's of the world. They're all massive examples, but yeah. you have like Emma Chamberlain, right? Yep. Who has started her own brands and crushes it. And I think we're going to see more and more and more of that. Because at the end of the day, if you're one of these elite level influencers or celebrities or creatives, you need to kind of position yourself and, and own your own brands. And, and ideally with, you know, these Web3 tools, your own content and your own data. Um, but I, 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 do, I do think that the, the, the top level, like the 1% of creators are in an interesting position, right? They, they have really a ton of attention and they can kind of move platforms and bring that attention elsewhere and start their own brands and, and do pretty well. I think for everybody else, uh, it's really, really difficult to grow and build an audience of any significance on any Web2 platform right now, including TikTok at this point. Um, and, and I just like, that's why I'm so excited about Web3 and, and the new tools and the new yeah. technology and applications that are being built there, because I think it's going to open the doors for all of these other creators to pump out content and monetize much more effectively At, on any web two platform you can't monetize like there's no ability for you to monetize if you're producing content and you don't have let's call it fifty thousand plus followers and like in it in like in any sort of real way yeah and uh the whole game there is build audience build audience build audience and then do a brand deal 
Yeah, it feels like everyone is trying to be or is a creator these days too, which is another problem. Like everyone, because of TikTok, Mm -hmm. everyone, it almost feels like it it lowered the playing field for everyone because of the algorithm, which is why people got hooked. And they're like, I have a shot. Maybe I could also be this person, which is the genius of TikTok, number one. But number two, it just feels like it's oversaturated. Like everyone is a creator now. Do you feel that way? Yeah, I mean, I feel I feel like there's a lot of people that are trying to be creators. I just feel like there's not the right tool set for these individuals to sustain being a creator for the long term. They can try and try and try, but it's a really, really, really tough business to try to build your audience to a certain level and then rely on that audience to do brand deals for an yeah. extended period of time. I mean, we've seen it time and time again, these people pop. They do, you know, a ton of brand deals. They make a lot of money, and then they're really not so relevant anymore, and yeah. that starts to die off. Um, it just feels like it's oversaturated. Like we only have attention spans are diminished, and we have a million creators, a million podcasts, mm-hmm. people vying for everyone's attention. Yeah, it is. And so it's it's com- it's super competitive, and I feel like the the. I wonder if there's going to be some sort of like reckoning. Like we look back at this creator bubble at a time, and it's like it was it. Did it, was it too much, you know? Was it sort of like? Yeah, I think it's a good question. I mean, you're right, it is It is saturated. I think there's a, there's a lot of people that are trying to be YouTubers and TikTokers and creators, and um, it, it's interesting. But I do think that, I do think as we progress, really, you know, what we're kind of moving towards is, is digital ownership, digital assets, a lot of the stuff that we do is on our phone, potentially with VR and, you know, what Meta's trying to build. So I think there's going to be opportunities as we move forward to, create something and if you can if you can get any sort of audience super fan community 150 200 people i think music nfts are proving this and you know, cooper's doing yeah. this really really well you really only <laughs> music need, nfts <laughs> music, music NFTs. you only need 200 like, like real fans yeah to, to to really make some sort of sustainable living so i i think that in my opinion i think that it's just going to continue i think we're going to see more and more creators i think there'll just be different tool sets and and i think there'll be different applications for them to use to to make money and make a living and it won't necessarily be like just the one percent and then everybody else yeah i think there was something that sold me about music nfts it was like if you basically have 200 or yep. so or so people that you're basically breaking even or what you would do if you had streamed that song yeah um, i think it's i think it's you know if you sell i don't know 150 music nfts or depending on the price point yeah it's the equivalent of like a million or two million streams yeah which is crazy because there's very very few people that get to a million streams on a song and then when you look at the splits and everything that happens after you get that million streams it's you make no money musicians make no money like just flat out the only people making money are djs like everybody else is Is that why everyone wants to be a dj Yes, that is why everybody wants to be a DJ. I'm not, like, I'm not kidding you. They're the only ones making money. I did not know that. Yeah, I mean, the only people that are touring artists that are making money are like the Justin Biebers and Dua Lipas of the world. If you're underneath that, your tour is typically breaking even or you're losing money. You make no money on streaming. Really, the only place you make money is merch. Like, Holy shit. Legitimately. I mean, I have friends that are pretty relevant artists that make little to no money. Jesus. And you think they'd be rich. So it's just brand deals and stuff. It's brand deals. It's merch. I mean, their label deals are trash, like terrible. Their touring deals are so expensive when you factor in flights and accommodations and food and everything else. Like legitimately, they 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 almost lose money Shit. on tour for the most part. You're, you're seeing Dude, it. Cooper has not pitched this to me. Let me just say, Cooper has not pitched this to me the way you just did. I mean, Though Cooper and I have discussed music NFTs. No offense. No shade, Cooper. Cooper's changing a lot of people's it's, lives. I give him a lot of credit. Um, he's he's really moving. He's moving people in the right direction that are not humongous, humongous artists to I think take ownership of their communities, understand who their fans are, collect that data, and push out their craft to a very small subset of individuals that want to support you. And they're making more money than they've ever made in their entire lives by far. Wow. Yeah. I know he. I mean, he's bought so many people's first like music NFT or just okay. NFT period, which mm-hmm. is. So cool and so admirable. Yeah. Um, which I have, I mean, Cooper and I are like really good friends. Yeah. So I've just he's always, good, he's, he's great. But so you think music NFTs are going to, are going to take off next, um, next cycle. What are your thoughts? I don't know. I mean, I think Cooper, Cooper and I have talked about this a lot. I think he's doing a lot in the space. Uh, I think there's a lot of really cool, um, you know, companies, technology companies that are building kind of in that realm that, that could do well. I'm trying to wrap my head around 
music NFTs at scale still. Uh, I'm trying to yeah. figure that out. I'm I'm really more more excited about social tokens. Yeah. And kind of digital. Let's talk ownership. about that. Um, so let's do it. Yeah. You, you guys, you guys basically have a part of, part of your product is social tokens. Yeah. So our, our product, uh, after party <laughs> is a technology company at the core. Um, yeah. so everything that we do on the event and membership side is really for awareness and attention to drive back to what we're building, you cool. know, on, on the, you know, platform and technology side. So we're, we built technology to kind of simplify this, to allow creators, artists, musicians, um, you know, influencers, whatever you want to call them. Uh, to really just utilize what they already do, the content that they already drop, turn those into digital assets and allow their fans to get those assets for free or buy them at a very low price point. And then through that ownership, like it's all about ownership for access, we grant them, you know, unique privileges, whether that's token gated live streams, tickets to stuff, merch drops. Um, it could be a million different opportunities, but it really allows for creators and artists and whoever, you know, whoever can attract attention to build community, build super fan communities, own the data, which is also another crazy point. If you go ask any creator, any musician right now, who their super fans are, no idea. Absolutely no idea who follows their content, who's been Besides a maybe shows. Taylor Swift, who it has like a cult that she maybe, curates. But she's still like, she wouldn't be able to see, these are my top 500 fans. I think like, she has like meetups with people, but I get what you're saying. But like, there's no like data, like Dave and Drita, oh, driven yeah, yeah, yeah. analytics oh, where yeah. she knows yeah, like, yeah, yeah. these are my fans. I'm going to reward these fans with backstage passes or VIP yeah. tickets to my upcoming yeah. show. Like, sure. She probably has meetup, meet, meet and greets that those fans are paying five grand. To, well, maybe not her because she does it for free. She does but. like cult things where she gets people together before her, like her album drops tomorrow. I'm, I'm a little bit of a Swifty, not like as hardcore as those the, the ones that make up conspiracy theories yeah. or whatever, but <laughs> like she, she gets people together and does crazy shit with her fans. Like no, she maybe yeah. has she's, one of the biggest cults. She's one of a kind. Yeah. Yeah. She, she's one of a kind when, in, in terms of that stuff. But what I think is really interesting is, is the blockchain is going to allow these individuals to know who their fans are and directly interact with those fans and give them experiences through social token ownership. So I love the idea of social tokens mm -hmm. as an idea. The thing that I think about a lot of the time is okay, well, this person doesn't have a MetaMask or an Ethereum wallet set up. A lot of their, there, there has to be like a Venn diagram of the people that are their super fans. And then will they take those steps to get into crypto web three by setting up a wallet, buying ETH, buying their token? And, you we, know, we made it so easy. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Wait, you, li you literally just log in with an email <laughs> phone number. So you're still kind of web two on web, web oh, 2.5. Yeah, <laughs> web 2.5. But but here's, here's the idea behind that. We really want to bring on the masses, right? So you log in to afterparty.com when we roll out the platform. We spin up a custodial wallet. Your digital assets are held in our custodial wallet, and you don't even necessarily know that. Like, we do it all without you knowing. So you can opt in to Jaden Hostler and, and buy one of his digital assets or get one for free, and you simply just log in. We'll, you know, spin up a custodial wallet for you. We'll hold those assets you know, in that wallet, once you become a little more savvy, you can move those assets onto an open sea, you can move them somewhere else and, and sell those things. Or you can just participate in what Jaden's offering you, the value that he's giving back to his, his owners and, and members of those, those tokens. Damn, that's so smart. So it's, 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 Though, you don't want like a 19 year old girl in, in Arkansas probably isn't going onto Coinbase and buying <laughs> Ethereum, probably isn't setting up her own wallet at this current moment. Yeah. So we want to make it very, very simple for these individuals to to be able to utilize the tools and get access to these individuals, but not have to go through the 10 steps that it takes now to, to do that. I guess with like a 15 year old fan who's in Arkansas and, you know, trying to buy like super fan, be a super fan of one of her creator or one of her favorite creators. Mm -hmm. It it seems a little difficult because if she just joined a loyalty program, then she's not having and like say she wants to sell that later on OpenSea. Now she technically has to pay taxes or something on that NFT. And so then isn't that like a little bit tricky, like loyalty programs for social tokens? That's the thing that I keep coming back to sometimes. Like, are we just reinventing the wheel sometimes of the same thing? Or what, what, what to you makes it different and more powerful? I mean, loyalty programs are tied to brands, right? Like yeah. typically a loyalty program is what's a good example? like Amex, yeah. right? On a points 
on a point but system. But basically like a loyalty program for a person, not which doesn't really totally exist right that, now. That's a, I mean, that's like a loyalty program. When I think of a loyalty program, I think of Amex. I think of Amazon Prime paying 10 yeah. bucks a month and I get access to their content libraries and free delivery. Amex, I get points and I get to spend those points on like discounted hotel rooms or whatever. With a social <laughs> token, you get to opt into that creator yeah. So you're opting into that individual. It could be a brand, but it can also be a creator or an individual. And those individuals are giving you value. They're giving you experiences. They're doing token gated live streams. They're giving you tips. They're giving you early access to merch drops. And the, the fundamental difference with a social token compared to a loyalty program is this thing is an asset. It's a sellable asset. Yeah. So if which, I'm- Which makes me concerned for the 15 year old that now is like- did she just sell, sold an asset on OpenSea and now does she have to pay taxes on that? That's yeah, I mean, I think, I think we're looking at these things uh, as selling between one and three, one and five dollars. Yeah. Um, so if, if something does pop and she makes a ton of money, yeah, maybe go get an accountant <laughs> and figure it out. But that's a good problem to have. Uh, so I don't know. I mean, I think, I think it'll be interesting. I think we're going to see a lot of very young people make a lot of money, which is. No, it's great. No, great. I love it. Yeah. No, I think that's awesome. Um, I always like, you know, I'm very bullish on the space. Obviously I've been in the space probably as long as you have. I, I think I saw an episode of one of your interviews and you've been in since like 2016. Yeah. Early 2016. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I've been here through the, the different cycles and I'm obviously pro it, but I always like to play like devil's advocate to some what other people think of this space yeah, because I feel should. like when they when they think of my show they might think that like I'm just pushing things but I, I feel like being critical of the things that we're the things that haven't worked in the last cycle and mm -hmm. and, and could work yep. going forward are always super important um but let's talk about after party again I want to talk about these parties because they you have some wild people there like what's the craziest shit that's gone down at these parties I don't you had the one in <laughs> Vegas like I need the yeah. tea no, I mean, I there's, need the tea. there's a lot of crazy stuff. What's, what's, what's been cool is, is <laughs> not to like sound lame, but no. our community is, is, I mean, they're all cool. Like everybody <laughs> gets along. Everyone's fucking sick. Everybody's getting along. Everybody's having fun. Um, I was out to dinner with Jaden the other night. Who's a man. He's been a, he's been a big supporter of ours for since day one. And he was just like, dude, because we're, we're like shifting. We're starting to do things at other venues. He's like, we got to get another after party thing going. He's like, it's the best thing that I do in LA like I love fucking coming to your after parties he's Damn. like it's amazing um so everybody gets to come and have a good time and and I mean yeah there's crazy stuff like when you see Sia walk through the door and do an acapella like she just starts singing to 20 people that are standing no. around her you're like what is happening this is so crazy so is she just doing that did you pay her to do no that? she just came through because she was excited about I what we were she doing. was very doesn't like to show up to things she doesn't which is even crazier yeah. That's a flex. She was the first person in the door. I'm not kidding you. We opened up the door to kind of start doing the stuff with, with creators. And we threw our first very intimate gathering at this house. She was the first person that walked through the door. And we were all sitting there like, what, what the, the fuck? fuck? Sia is the first person that just walked through our door. This is insane. That is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. In not wearing the, no, she's just, yeah, as herself. Hanging in. Wow. Mm -hmm. Damn. I, okay, so I actually have not been to any. I don't think I've been to any after party that? things. I was the Art Basel thing an after party event. Yeah, yeah, we did something for. Our, we're doing something again for Art Basel this year, but we did something. I just last never year. get. I don't know if I'm not cool enough. Clearly not cool. Um, everyone there is cool. Wait a second. There's no. <laughs> there's no coolness. You said to everyone there is cool. And I haven't been invited. I'm just doing the math here. Wow. Wow. Not cool enough to go to the after party Maybe parties. Maybe you're too cool to come to the after party I don't, party I don't know. Sia, if Sia's on the list. Maybe I was I'm... nervous to invite you because <laughs> I thought you would show up and just make everybody feel uncomfortable. Maybe that's <laughs> I, I would never. Um, okay, so that's the coolest thing. Probably the top. She acapella would she sing? She acapella It was one of her, I don't, I couldn't even tell you. It was, I think it was just kind of random. She would Dude. just started singing. Unreal. That was cool. And then, you know, we have, we have a lot of stuff that happens because it's a small, it's a small community out there in LA and there's people that date and then aren't dating. And there's, you know, oh, those fun drama. things that happen. TMZ. And, yeah. And then we had, we were supposed to have Young Gravy perform <laughs> recently. And it was, it was two days after the, what was it? The, the, but where he showed up the with, with, with Addison's mom. Well, he showed up with Addison's mom. So it was the, like, everybody was talking about it. It was nuts. We were all thinking Monty was going to show up. No, and fight him at after and party. And fight him at after party. So we had extra security. Jesus we had Christ. the whole thing set up. 
fans actually figured Extra out. Extra security for Monty? Do you think he really required it? I mean, have you followed Monty on I, social? I've, I unfortunately don't follow him because he's insane and he's ruined his family, but That's I, what I'm trying to get But he's, he's, a, he's kind of big, but like literally one dude could be like, Sit down. Yeah, but we also want to make sure everybody feels safe. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, we we'll, we'll get extra security. Do you have money it. on Young Gravy or Monty? Um, gonna fight. That's a good question. I'm taking Gravy. Tam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking Gravy. <laughs> I also just want Gravy to win if that ever happens. But just because I that's the sad stuff. I guess I don't know how you're not jaded by LA. Um, I don't know. I think I've stayed. I, I've tried to stay. I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, but kind of behind the scenes and help out people. So you stay behind the scenes, but you, you don't really because you do date some influencers. Yeah, I do. I mean, I guess I guess when I say stay behind the scenes in terms of like career driven stuff, I've never I've never been like a content creator while I was pushing, you know, five pieces of content a day on any social platform to like grow my audience to monetize it. Yeah, um, I've, I've more worked with individuals and, and helped them grow their careers. Uh, so that's, that's kind of, I guess what I mean when I stay behind the scenes is I've worked with a ton of people over the last decade and they've all, not all, but a lot of them have done really, really well. And that was kind of, kind of my lane. So, but back to the, do you get tired of LA? So I go out to LA sometimes and I am around that same circle of people and I'm like, I got to get the hell out of here. It feels demonic to me or something like that. And, and, and it's amazing that you seem totally normal and not, Thanks. and not like, <laughs> <laughs> you uh, seem fine I like you that. no you seem like a nice person and you, you again probably, thanks you, yeah no i'm just <laughs> i'm just saying like it feels like that la could get really sick to a lot of people and spit it's, them out and it's and not I, an easy place to live i mean la is an interesting place i think there's there's a lot of beautiful parts about it um la is the entertainment capital of the world so you get in my opinion you get a lot of the most creative individuals in the world that come to la to chase their dream, whatever that is, actor, actress, social stuff, you know, working kind of in entertainment or whatever that might be. So you get all these very, very interesting people, but yes, you're right. Like it's a very, you know, clout driven. I need a lot of influence and, and followers and, and things to happen, you know, on my socials or within my circle to kind of get to that next level. And that's, what's very different about LA from really everywhere else. Like I come to New York and I have I said this last night, I have amazing conversations and it's so refreshing to come here and just talk to people about yes. something outside of, you know, what it is that we do on a daily basis, which is all kind of social driven. And fortunately for me, I'm very involved in, you know, the Web3 ecosystem and all things that we're trying to build. So it's not, you know, it's not what's happening on TikTok. It's like, how can we improve people's lives with with the stuff that we're building? But that's see that seems all good and true. Mm -hmm. And you hang around. I'm not I'm not putting a blanket on LA. I'm just saying that there is a lot of clout, which is very like self fulfilling. Kind Thousand percent. Of, and how do you handle that? Because I I couldn't, I and I actually want to tip like tips from that because I don't I get I hang around people who are too cloudy, and I feel like I need to go take a shower. Yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. I keep my circle pretty tight in terms of my true friends who I spend most of my time with. Yeah. Um, you know, all the other stuff is, is are there definitely, I have a ton of acquaintances, like a ton of people that I care about and I think are great. Um, I, I don't know. I think the unlock is probably just surrounding yourself with people that are your actual friends that you enjoy that might not necessarily be using you for something or, or, or trying to get somewhere through like what you can offer them. Um, so I think, you know, I think LA specifically, you, you really have to kind of keep your circle tight and just really be friends with people that are your friends for you and not for what you can kind of give them. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. I, I, I don't I know. think that's kind of anywhere. I but. think that's anywhere. I, but I feel like I've been able to do that better in New York. I, f I probably would figure it out in LA. I just, I'm always intrigued by it because people usually go, I mean, if they don't stay in Arizona or like their hometown, they, yeah. they go a few places. I'm one of the few people that I know in New York City from Arizona just because like on a map it's just definitely further away. Yeah, I mean LA is not for everybody. Like, yeah. I, that, like that's for sure. I mean, I've seen a, a lot of people come there, hang out for a year, try to do what they're going to try to do and then leave and go back home. Yeah. And it happens all the time every day. It's really 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 hard to to live in LA for a long period of time and it's even harder to go there from Arizona and do anything. Yeah. Right? Like you typically in entertainment it's my uncle is this person, I know this person, my grandfather founded this very very tight so it's really not easy to go out <laughs> what do you there think about it. that all oh, there's so many nepotism uh models influencers people these days do you think it's increasingly more difficult for 
like your average Joe to, to sort of make their way in this world? Yeah. I mean, I think there's a lot more content. Um, I think there's a, a lot of uh, people that are able to utilize these, these social media tools and, and try but like the nepotism part of it. Just, you know, the, the, yeah. the, the, the kids that grew up like uh, Kaya Gerber, Kendall Jenner, or Bella Hadid, they're everyone kind of sees them, but they, everyone is sort of has a connection most of the time. Like yeah. it's very rare that someone kind of breaks out on their own, uh, unless it's TikTok. It's rare, but I think it's happening more and more. I think if you were to go back 15 years, it was al- almost all Kaya Gerbers and, and, and that. And I yeah. think you're seeing people from like, look at the Paul brothers in the middle of nowhere, right? Yeah. Like they blew up and they're the most relevant influencers and people kind of in the space right now. Yeah. And there's, there's more cases of that. So I think it's really cool that social has allowed people from Vegas or Oklahoma or wherever to sit in their basement or go out on the street and film some content and people like that content and they can be like, look at Charlie D'Amelio. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. It's insane. And that wouldn't have happened a decade ago. I also, speaking of Charlie, Dixie D'Amelio, it, it's cool to see these influencers kind of like t- level up. Like mm-hmm. I feel like I'm watching Dixie. She shaved her head. She's yep, just like cool. trying to just, mm-hmm. she's like kind of like fucked. And I fuck TikTok, not really, but they kind of get rid of what made them and then try to go off in this other direction. I feel like Addison Rae did that too. Yeah. Not to go down that like yeah, yeah. way, but I just feel like it's always interesting how they they have these like amazing managers that totally mm-hmm. shift and change their image into they're not just a TikToker pretty much overnight. Yeah, I mean I know Greg, I know their manager very very well. He was at UTA. I've known him for a long time. Really smart. Yeah, Re- like he left UTA and he manages you know the family exclusively. But you do, I mean, you do see it. You see the leveling up. Like you have, they have smart people. Yeah. Behind the scenes that are helping them and very very smart people that kind of know how to make those transitions. From TikTok to being a massive global celebrity. Yeah. yeah. So there's been a lot of agent- agencies um, like UTA, uh, WME, uh, CAA. They've all gotten into like they have their Web three division now. What mm-hmm. do you What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think I think we've seen this over and over and over again, right? Like CAA, UTA, WME didn't have a digital division when yeah. I was there. There was no digital division, and then they were like, "Shit, we got to do we got to do this because these influencers are getting all the attention and they're." getting a lot of money. So um, I think we're going to see the exact same thing happen that hap- was so- happened with social with Web3. Yeah. And I, I know, you know, most of the individuals that are kind of leading those divisions at the at the larger agencies and smart. Uh, I think they're going to start, you know, signing a lot of talent like we've been seeing recently. Yeah. And uh, I think they're going to start you know, building out their roster of, of individuals and brands, companies. Is there any agency that you think is like... I don't know if you can say it on the show. Uh, I like UTA a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're really smart. CAA is doing a lot of really cool stuff. They're all doing cool stuff. But uh, CAA and UTA are the, are the two closest yeah. for me that I'm, that I'm you know, in contact with on a consistent basis. WME is doing some cool stuff too. But I, I really like UTA. I think their team over there is very strong. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's talk a little bit about just crypto in general. Um, are you, what do you <laughs> Lost your cap. Here's my cap. You don't need it. It's fine. No, nah, we're good. Um, you, so how did you enter crypto? Did you get in through Bitcoin? Yeah, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Actually, it was Ethereum. Um, one of the guys I was working at the agency with, he, uh, I was sitting at lunch with him and we were bored out of our minds. And he was like, he had a very wealthy friend. He was like, dude, my friend just bought like 500 grand worth of Ethereum. And I don't even remember what the price point was that he bought it at, but it had like 7 x And he was like, he fucking has like 4 million bucks now. And the kid was like 22. And I'm like... A, that's awesome that he has 500 grand to just dump into a yeah. you know, something semi-speculative at the time. And, and now he has 4 million bucks. But he told me about it and, and I got interested. So I actually went and I, I, I ended up reading the Bitcoin and Ethereum white paper. I bought some Ethereum and everybody told me I was an idiot. Um, but I just, <laughs> I just became obsessed. Like I became obsessed with the technology and what it could potentially unlock. So those were the first two. I think that's a pretty typical story. What um, was the selling point for you though? Um, I just, I thought Bitcoin was really interesting because I think it was, you know, fundamentally trying to just solve one issue. Um, and I think, I think Ethereum was, was interesting to me at the, at the current moment, like at the moment in time, I had these two kids at the time trying to explain like what the opportunities and possibilities were. And, and this is in like 2016. This is like, yeah, probably like early to mid 2016, 2016. And I just thought there was a lot of potentially really useful and interesting use, use cases. And I just thought that the the ledger of information and just the, you know, the, the, the ability to verify everything that was happening on chain was super interesting to me because we were dealing with and have been dealing with for a long time, 
payment issues, uh, you know, like 30, 60, 90 day yeah, uh, net payments totally. or people forgetting about it totally. or not paying in full. And you talent can just being check your ether scan. Did right. this come through? Like p talent being screwed over by their management. Yeah. You know, them taking 50% instead of 20%. And there's just all this shady shit that happens in that world specifically and just across the board in general. And I just, I just thought it was really interesting that it was like this ledger of information that was that you were able to verify to know exactly what was happening and those, you know, those splits and the things that were going on were instantaneous. No, that's, uh, that's a use case that I didn't even really realize. I didn't realize how far, I guess before he came on the show, I always knew the entertainment industry was, had a lot of problems, like as every institution does, mm -hmm. right? The higher up everything gets, it gets a little bit foggier and more corrupt governments, like yeah, yeah. It, the music industry, the entertainment industry, but I didn't realize how bad it was for creators Insane. and like how, ripped off people basically I mean, were getting it's insane. i thought that was maybe solved for by now but clearly not no i mean there's creators that i know i'm not going to name the company but there was a company that like blew up sort of i mean they were spending a ton of money yeah and they they onboarded every creator under the sun in to, crypto no 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 oh. this was this was a different company kind of kind of in the in the web 2 space just a, a social company and uh, they raised a ton of money they brought on every creator thriller <laughs> imaginable and they <laughs> they owe uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of money. I hear it all the time. They're like, you know, I owed so much money by this company and they're not paying me. And it's like, that's shitty. Damn. Like, that sucks. Damn. Yeah. That's a, that's a really cool use case that I, I didn't even really kind of think of. I'm, I do wonder about on-chain data sometimes too, though. It's like, it's great for things like that. Um, bad if you have some like ENS that you get a bunch of spam drop to, that we sort of saw play out before. So I wonder what the future looks like. Like basically if you, if you, Charlie D'Amelio had like charliedemilio.eth, she could mm -hmm. be just spammed all this shit that she doesn't want because there's not a lot of consent right now. Yeah. And so it's like on chain's great, but then you also don't want to be caught holding stuff that you don't want to be holding, like some yeah. really bad NFT that's like, so I love it. In some ways, I think we have some, some areas to grow. Yeah, no, I agree. I, but I think that's a problem of like right now. I think, you know, I think it'll be fixed. People will figure that out pretty quickly. I think they're already starting to. Um, yeah. But yeah, that, I don't think that'll be. A huge issue moving forward uh as you know as everything progresses yeah i'm so excited to see i you know and look back just the way you kind of did it back in like the web 2 era and we're like early i knew this was going to pop off and mm -hmm. like watch this conversation back me too and be actually. like we, we I mean, didn't even know we didn't even know it was coming at the time and how we fixed all these problems and so like web 3 doesn't even feel like web 3 i hope it doesn't even feel like that because i also think the other thing <laughs> Um, is like when I was growing up, um, and I, I think we're sort of in this, I think I'm a little bit younger than you, but basically everyone was like, you know, social media, like be careful what you post on the internet. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know, like you just have no idea what was going to be out there. Yeah. Like, and your, your parents are warning you, don't talk to strangers online, don't post all this stuff. Literally all people do right now is talk to strangers online and post like the most inappropriate whatever stuff. And, and no one gets... Really, unless you're an awful person, mm -hmm. uh, fired from their job or, or, or canceled, yeah. um, you can basically be yourself on the internet now and post whatever you want. And we never saw that at the time. Like, it evolved into that. And hopefully, I, I, you know, I kind of feel like that will probably happen in Web3. Yeah, well. I, think, I think the people that are more themselves online are the ones that are able to actually build real audience and have an emotional connection with people. I think if you're totally. faking it, you know, people really don't give a shit and they follow you maybe because you're pretty or good looking or whatever. But I think that the people that are real, right? Like the people yeah. that are actually real are the ones that can kind of shift and shape things. And, and, and you want to follow those people because you, you, you think that you feel like you're getting real value from this yeah. individual because they're telling the truth or being themselves. Yeah, totally. Speaking of that, there's two social apps. I want to get your takes since you're always early on stuff. Um, obviously no be real but then yeah. there's this other one I, I read about this week that's basically a, a real like zoomer app where you can only say positive things to people uh -huh. did you hear about that one no what is it called uh let me pull it up hold on if you can only say positive things to people don't you feel like that's kind of i mean i don't know is that are the things that are being said kind of forced i don't i, I don't oh know. it's called gas gas it's just kind of it's also that's like a funny it's a good name tangent to crypto but yeah like i guess basically it gas you up yeah. I'm, I'm gonna guess oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes know. sense um, but yeah. you can only say positive things to people mm -hmm. and it's been really popular with Gen Z. And so they're all about like authenticity and positivity mm -hmm. compared to like millennials who are like hardened <laughs> dicks. It's just awful. Honestly, we are. It's I dicks. think it's kind of because we grew up with our parents didn't get tech. 
and like millennials yeah. and, and we're kind of that last generation that had to deal with all this BS. Yeah, yeah. And then they're just <laughs> like, we've always had a, I've, I was, grew up as an iPad kid and, and can do what we want, but I don't, I guess you can't really opine on gas, but what do you think about be real? Does that have the same power or just kind of not? I think both of those, I, I know nothing about gas, but just kind of hearing about it from you right now, I, I feel like both of those are just features. Yeah. I, I don't think be real is going to be around in a year. Yeah. I think it's going to be very similar to clubhouse. Uh, we already see TikTok. Yeah. You know, doing what be real is doing. I'm sure Instagram will roll. <clears throat> I'm sure Instagram will roll something out. I think it's really cool. Like they've, they've built a really dope company and they have millions and millions of users. I just feel like it's a feature. Yeah. I, I don't think it's, I don't think they're sticking power long term. Cool. Interesting, interesting to know. Okay, well now we're going to play um, the uh, the awkward money questions by Let's Cash go. App. So, are you ready? Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, let me readjust myself. I got too comfortable in this chair. <laughs> readjust for the awkward money questions. Yeah, make it more uncomfortable. Okay. <clears throat> what is the most you've spent on a single NFT? Uh, I'm an idiot. Um, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was looking, I was... I had the opportunity to buy apes like everybody else in the space very early. And then I was going to buy this really cool cheetah ape. And I think it was, um, I think it was like 25 ETH at the time. So it was like 60, 65, 60 grand, something around there. And I tried to buy it and I lost out on a gas war to somebody else. Nightmare. And in my head, I was like, oh man, I really wanted that. And I looked at some of the other like comparable apes at the time and I didn't really like them. So I went and bought a rare Mebit for like 65 grand. Damn. And then it just collapsed in value. And That's the, rough. the apes just continue to pump and you got all this really cool stuff with the ape when I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty upset. That's always that tough one. though, because you equally could have been like you could lucked out and then your story changes. That's could've, the thing. That's yeah, how crypto is. <laughs> <laughs> That's how crypto is. You get into something that like, it, you, there's honestly, it's, very much luck. Yeah. Um, okay. Who's someone that owes you money? Somebody that owes me money? Man, that's a good question. Um, I don't think anybody owes me money, to be honest. Call them out. This is your chance to call I, them I out. I honestly don't think anybody owes me money. Talent agencies, brand deals, anybody? Anyone? Um, there's probably some brand deals for <laughs> sure that owe me money All right, from we'll, the past. We'll, we'll let you skip over it. Um, what's the last transaction you made on Cash App? The last transaction, I actually bought some Bitcoin on Cash App. Um, we love that. Yeah, bought some Bitcoin there. It was cool when they rolled out that feature. So that was definitely the last transaction that I had on Cash App. Yes, we love we love people buying Bitcoin on Cash App. You did you know that you could buy as little as a dollar? <laughs> so I, I did not know that. Yeah. So if you just want just one dollar, should I buy a dollar's worth right now? I think so for the show. All right. I think I think the people want it. I hope it's easy. Oh, of course. Very intuitive. I feel like everything should just be like two clicks, you know? I agree with you. That's what we're building an after party. Yes. User experience in crypto sucks. Oh, wow. Bye. Wow. Let's do it. You know what? I'm going to buy $50 worth of Bitcoin. Wow. This is get crazy. <laughs> $50 to this man right here in the, front, in the front row. Silent auction. <laughs> we love it. What's your, what's your cash tag? Do you have a cash tag? Yeah. I'm sure that I do. <laughs> you're, not, you're not dropping it. <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Something weird. You don't have to say it if it's weird. I got to find it first. <laughs> it's Robert Graham 24. What's the 24 for? Either Kobe or my... my so LA. Day, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Let's just go with Kobe. No, respect. <laughs> respect. <So> um, <laughs> cool. I just bought $50. Nice. Okay. What's the most recent purchase you regret? The most recent purchase that I regret, I, I, I buy some, I buy some designer stuff every once in a while that I wear one time and I hate what? after I buy like? it. I bought a, uh, I bought a uh, Dolce & Gabbana sweater that looks like a Christmas sweater recently. Oh. And I wore it one time and I wore it and I hated the, like I hated it the entire time I was wearing it. I hate <laughs> the sweater. Uh, hated myself. I hated, I hated myself. everything. <laughs> I hated the sweater. I hated everything. That was I hated happening. everything that was going on. So that 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 was that, that was your. Was bad this one. is a nice sweater, by the way. What is this? This is this is Zara. Really, I like yeah. it a lot. I like it a thousand times it's better. So than, it's so cute. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> what's the most? Is that the most expensive? Does that lead to the next question? Yeah, that's what, probably in line with all the expensive fuse glue. Expensive crap that I buy. What's your most expensive New York City meal? You're not here often. Ooh. 
Where, where are you going tonight? Going out to eat anywhere? Or you have you had a meal since you've been? I went to Zero Bond last night for the first time. What did you think? It was cool. It's a, it's a vibe. Yeah, it's a vibe. It's like My, the new Soho House. I know. I guess it's more exclusive than Soho House. Yeah, yeah. But you also have one location, so it's easy to be more exclusive. Than yeah, Soho. yeah. Um, but it was cool. Uh, it was expensive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. And what is the best purchase that you made for $15 or fewer? Because if, if you use my code Aubrey, you get $15 in free money. And $15, I want to say it goes a long way these days. Um, but with inflation, maybe not quite so much. <laughs> yeah, it goes nowhere. So, so it goes nowhere. Except when I was in Europe and that dollar, the euro dollar parity is strong. Nice. Yeah. Not really in nice. our own country, but against other countries, we're we kind of fuck right now. Yeah. So okay, so we're crushing we're, it. I I felt like a baller when I was <laughs> in Europe, like I was just like, oh yeah, seventy two euros, seventy two ish dollars, like yeah. it's great for me. So anyway, <laughs> it's great. Fifteen dollars, like which? Um, fifteen dollars or less. That's fifteen dollars that I've ever spent in your entire life. In my entire life, <laughs> probably buying Bitcoin on Cash App. We love that. We love, we love that. Every day. I spend $14 day. a day on Bitcoin every on Cash day. App. <laughs> this man is on Cash App every day. I literally go on well, Cash App more than TikTok or Instagram. Oh, my God. I just what a legend. Yeah. Robert Graham, legend hero. How can people, number one, get in contact with you, but maybe come to an after party party? Yeah, we're on. Do you just call it an after party party? Or no, do you, you want to hear a really funny, like, yeah. cool story? So we trademarked after party. Oh. And we trademarked it globally and we have a bunch of different categories that we trademarked it in, but we, we actually got approved. I'm not kidding you. This is no joke. You can look it up for like live events and gatherings. We own the word after party in the United States. So if you're Kanye or Drake or whoever, and you promote something as after, like an after party, we can technically come after you and sue you. <laughs> Kanye is already getting sued <laughs> yeah. this week. So we're never going to do that. It's, no, but it's no this is a threat. This is Robert Graham is I will threatening sue anybody that says the word after party. <laughs> and no one's allowed to have after parties or fun anymore. They're dead. <laughs> the only after parties that can survive are the after parties that we throw. Or outside of the U.S. since you've only yeah. trademarked it in the U.S. So you can party outside this Go country. To Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> but you cannot party in America nope. anymore or do an after party. We locked it up. <laughs> it's kind of evil. Yeah. So I guess, um, anyway, how, how, do you want, how, how can people come to an after party? Maybe I'll show up at one someday. Yeah, so I mean, you can, you can buy into the community. Me personally. You're more than welcome to come whenever you want. We'll, I'll believe it when I get I would, an actual invite. I would love to gift you one of our utopians. <gasps> I would love to receive one. You can have one. all access to all things after party moving wow. forward. Wow. All right. You just have to promise to never sell it. I would never. I would never sell. Deal. Yes. And you also have to come to LA because we do the mints in person. All right. That's. <laughs> yeah. So. That's. Um, book a trip. All right. And we'll do that. All right. Cool. So yeah, we, you can you can buy into the community. Um, it's, it's kind of like a decentralized Soho house. If you want to own one, you, can, you have to talk to our membership director and go through the whole process. And then, yeah. So, we, we so technically you could not be allowed in if they, if they vet you well, and they're like. We want to keep, nah. the idea behind this is, and it always has been, these, these PFP collections that we're dropping, these 10,000 you know, piece collections, it was all crypto native individuals. And for the most part, it was all guys. And we didn't think that that was going to be a strong community moving forward. Uh, we didn't think that had lasting power. So we wanted to really focus on curating the best possible community, women, men, people of all races, all genders, doing different things. Um, and and it's been working. So we want to continue down that path of really bringing in great people. You don't have to be famous. You don't have to be rich. You just you know have to be doing something interesting and, and be a good person and contribute to the community in some way, shape, or form. Um, so that's kind of the idea behind behind the approval process of getting in. I love that. It's a more holistic like feeling of what humanity actually is compared to that's the goal. What crypto Twitter is. No exactly. offense, crypto Twitter. <laughs> Anyways, thank you, Robert, so much for coming on the observation. Appreciate it. Um, and we'll be back here next time. Good luck and Godspeed. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Yeah. I like the Godspeed. You don't